We welcome now Misty Maris, legal analyst and trial attorney. Uh, Misty, it's great to see you. So after delays, the defense has won the right to a speedy trial, as you know. Do you think that specifically helps or hurts the suspect in this case? Well, at this point, a lot of the defense arguments have been this rocky path into the courtroom. Of course, there's been so many hitches with this prosecution relating to the removal of the defense attorneys, the reinstatement of the defense attorneys, as uh, some evidence that defense attorneys claim have not been turned over. So in this particular case, they've asked for speedy trial because it's just been so long to actually get to the point where this is getting into the courtroom. Of course, if there's health concerns relating to the defendant uh, and, and just the ability to get this before witnesses' memories fade, and there's a problem with putting on a defense. So in this case, it was necessary to ask for that relief. I want to dig deeper into that in just a moment, but, you know, Alex was talking a lot about this evidence leak and what it's doing to the case. Uh, how do you read that, Misty? How do you think the impacts will play out in court? So it is the primary focus of this contempt proceeding. The, the evidence leaks coupled with what prosecution says is defense attorney's violation of gag orders. And look, that evidence leak, in my view, just looking at it from a trial attorney perspective, it's very negative for the defense. These were just horrific images that came into the public sphere. And that would tend to be a big problem for the defense because it would poison the well of jurors. Now, one of those one of the issues was whether or not that was enough for a change of venue. Of course, that was denied. But really, it comes down to how did this happen? Now, we know the attorneys have said that it was not willful from their office. They've said that there was a rogue employee who leaked these photos without their knowledge. Uh, and, and that's where it stands. And the judge will make a determination on that today. Yeah, we will be waiting. So Richard Allen's attorneys, they were earlier tossed off the case, as was outlined. The Indiana Supreme Court just ruled they're now reinstated. How do you believe that will impact Richard Allen's defense specifically moving forward, Misty? Well, this is the only way that this trial could possibly be in that bucket of speedy, right? Because if new attorneys had to get on this case and get up to speed, that would be incredibly problematic. Richard Allen had expressed that he wanted to keep his legal team. And of course, there's a lot of deference uh, to a defendant to say it's it's up to them who they want to represent them. Now, these are assigned counsel. Uh, and so there was the ability for them to perhaps be ejected from the case. But this is uh, these are the people who are going to know the case best. And they're the ones that, you know, the other motion that's being heard today is the defense asking prosecutors where a whole slew of what they call exculpatory evidence. That's evidence that tends to be good for the defendant, including 2017 interviews that happened shortly, you know, right at the very beginning of the investigation that were recorded over that they do not have. So they're really digging into that issue as well. So there's a lot going on here on both sides, both from the defense and prosecutors relating to conduct in this trial. You know, and Alex led us in uh, to a little bit of what he's seeing in the courtroom there today. Richard Allen, as you know, looked really thin, sickly as uh, these proceedings have continued, but appears to be a bit healthier, engaged. Uh, what does that tell you, if anything, uh, about these court proceedings, Misty? So that says that he's uh, able to participate in his own defense. That's one thing that everyone always looks at from the from the perspective of what's called competency, that he's able to participate in his defense and that he knows and understands the proceedings against him. Now, that wasn't necessarily an issue for today, but when there's a decline in health and something that's visible, it's always something that could potentially come into play, whether or not the individual actually is competent to stand trial. So it appears that he is uh, better equipped in that sense uh, to move forward with this case. And by the way, Kelly May, that's right around the corner. Yeah, it certainly is. It's scary to think about. All right, Misty Maris, we always appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.